Hi, everyone. It's my great honor to speak here. Uh, first of all, congratulations to all the students here at the BGS, Hong Kong U Chapters. It's a very special moment for you to become the BGS members. I'm very proud of you. It's such a big achievement to have these recognitions. And today, I want to start with a story. I read this when I was around your age, and I still find it very inspiring. It's actually a story written by the Harvard Business School professor, David Bell, about reunion. It starts with a letter asking the student back for the fifth reunion after graduation. His advice is, don't go. You shouldn't go. Because a fifth reunion is a dangerous event. It forces you to evaluate what you have accomplished in the short period. So when you arrive at the reunion event, you will check out the mix of the models of other cars. You look at the business car. You will figure out how well your classmates have done. And you will hear that some of them might become a, a senior VP of a certain bank or a director in a consulting firm or a millionaire uh, after a successful cash out from a startup. And you will forget whatever aspiration you have that are uncertain. And you forget what is really important to you because you really care about how you measure up against your peers in the next five years. A lot of intelligence and talented people become risk-averse and end up taking a safer path, a path that gives them more certainty, a path that it may not be something that they're inspired to do. So just like many people, I have the same struggle when I was younger. And today I prepared three different advice that I want to share with you. The first one is find your calling. So ask yourself, do you have a job, a career, or calling? The difference matter. I worked in a restaurant for my dad and I'm trading my time for money. It's a good life experience, it's a job, but it's not what I enjoy doing. Then I promised my parents to become an actuary. Well, it's a good profession, it's a good, great career. I like math, I get to develop my technical and domain expertise. And I follow the 10,000 hours rule, just like the book Outlier said. I work really hard to get to the top performance and get promoted. I was good at doing what I was doing, but something is missing. And when I was 30, I had two heart surgeries and I stayed in the hospital for 20 days. And I realized life is short. I gotta find my purpose. Startup is my calling. I found my purpose, I found my inspiration. I found that it's something that I meant to do in life. And I will do that even if you don't pay me because it's something that I love. It's something that I find meaningful. I've become a serial entrepreneur and I have a passion for startups, I create something new. It's challenging and can be very rewarding. We only live once, so do something that is meaningful to you and try to make a difference in the world. It takes time to discover your calling. It's okay that you haven't found one. Life is a journey. Most of the time, if you, most of the time during your internship, you don't find out what you like. You actually find out what you don't like. So keep trying, keep figuring out. Maybe by the method of eliminations, you will discover who you really are and what you're inspired to do. The second one is be resilient. Startup is hard. 90% of them failed. Our default is to be killed. We survive by being exceptional. It's not being just average. So believe in yourself. Don't just give up easily. Giving up too easily means you are falling doing hard things. You only become stronger and stronger when you push through the challenges. And when you ask, when, when you ask what we ask you to do in startup is unfair because you have to compete against other big company uh, and with 100 times more resources. And you have to be 10 times better, not just smarter and better to survive. So don't just settle in a comfort zone. Lots of times the people start in a comfort zone, stay in a comfort zone. Sometimes when you're always at the top 1% or top 5%, they become reservoirs in things that you're not good at. And that really limits your development when you don't push yourself into failure. Be the best version of yourself. Focus on improving that 1% every day. And over time, you will start to see how much better and how much stronger you become. To me, the most important skill that you learn at school today is the ability to learn, it's a learning ability. In the early days, I complete eight professional exams to become a qualified actress. By now, I, I can tell you, I, I might have forgotten all the advanced calculus, stochastic modeling, but I can still apply my learning ability to learn what I need to learn, to uh, learn to how to start a company, marketing, branding, fundraising, product management. If you master the learning ability, you can learn anything. So be resilient. 
My last advice is to take a long-term view. So don't worry about how much you made before 30. It doesn't matter. Don't worry about what you will accomplish in five years. It doesn't matter. You might have heard that um, Jeff Bezos make long-term decisions by minimizing regrets. So at the end of your life, will you regret not having done this? He could have stayed in hedge funds and do very well, but he would always wonder what, the, what that business idea could have been. So he left his job and started Amazon. So he is now the second wishes guy in the world after Elon Musk. So when you think long-term, you will have higher risk tolerance and you will look at the whole scope of your career more holistically and make these short-term changes more and irrelevant. So take more risks, especially when you're still young. And for me, in 2015, I left my consulting job to start a new company with my co-founders. It's a boutique consulting firm. We built product for the insurance company. We didn't know what we want to do, but it's a good environment to learn, to understand how startup works, to learn some new skill set, train up the team, understand the industry pain points. Insurance is broken, and we want to fix that. Not until when there's a new virtual insurance company in the license. We were crazy enough to set up another company to go for it. So we became the first virtual insurance company in Hong Kong, that is Bowtie. We're very proud to have this very rare opportunity to build a new insurance company, to define a new calibers, to rebuild everything, every underlying structure of an insurance company with modern technologies. And I'm very fortunate to have a very strong team, partners that I really enjoy working with. I learned so much from them and they're much more talented and much more smart than me in many ways. And just right before this presentation, I was actually at my office celebrating our third anniversary of Bowtide. We're very proud to wish 40 billion protection amounts. It's actually a much more meaningful metrics than how much revenue we made or what valuation we have. As a purpose-driven company, it reminds us why we are working hard and what we inspire to do. And as for our first startup that I mentioned earlier, I just read the international news yesterday. They just closed a Series B of 75 million USD. And, and I have to say, it's, it's actually all the credit go to the new management team. The point is, if we so focus on whether we survive the first two years, how much we make, and whether we succeed in five years, we will never start. We will never choose this path. But it turned out to be the best decision I've ever made. In closing, so back to the ending of the reunion story. If you want to measure up yourself, don't do it next year, not five years, not 15 years. Give yourself enough time to find your calling. Be resilient to learn to push through challenges. This is how you become better and stronger. And think long-term. Go through the up and downs in life, realize your full potential. And one day, many, many years later, you will receive a notice inviting you back, maybe to the Hong Kong U reunion. You open the letter, it is your 25th reunion. And this time, you know what? I really think you should go. Thank you.